Welcome to tonight's meeting of Legislative District 18. My name is Larry Bodine and I'm chair and I'm really excited to welcome you to tonight's meeting. We've got a, a couple of fun surprises as well as a lot of really good information. Let me introduce Nancy Gutierrez. She is one of our state representatives for LD18 and in only one year, she has advanced to become the Arizona House Whip for the Democratic Party. She's going to talk about period poverty, which is the lack of access to safe hygienic feminine products during monthly periods and inaccessibility to basic sanitation services, as well as menstrual hygiene education. Nancy, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Larry. Thanks for having me. I'm thrilled uh, to be here. So first, before I show you my slides, I just want to um, say that the reason we are here, uh, the reason I'm here talking to you is has been a group effort, um, and it's been worked on uh, the idea of providing period products to anyone who needs them, especially in our schools, was um, We've been working on it. I've been working on it with Christina Early and Kim Bain and um, Susie Anderson. So I'm grateful to them for coming together and bringing a group of of just community oriented women to to help us with that. So uh, this all got started. It all got started for me actually when I started teaching um, yoga at Tucson High 11 years ago because um, I noticed. And I was told by my students that when they, you know, got their period and didn't have anything with them, a pad or a tampon, uh, they didn't want to go to the nurse to, um, to go ask for one. And I thought that was strange. And so I just had honest conversations with them and they were, I was lucky enough for them to, to tell me, but they said oftentimes, um, and it wasn't just necessarily the nurse, it was people in the nurse's office saying, you know, well, why didn't you know that you were going to get your period or why don't you have anything with you? And so they just were feeling shame and embarrassment and didn't want to go. And so my colleagues in uh, the PE department had um, always were stocking the locker rooms with pads and tampons. And at that point, 11 years ago, we were getting free pads and tampons from the companies that create, that manufacture them. They would send a box, um, at least once a, once a year. And it was great, but we always ran out. And my classroom happens to be separate from the gym. I'm the odd person out in another building. And so I started buying period products um, to put into a, a little file cabinet that I have right next to my door. And what I found was students were using that more and more. And they were very appreciative and grateful that they had they didn't have to ask me for them. Um, and they there was no shame involved. And uh, th they were just readily available. And so they started telling their friends who, and, and I encouraged this, friends who weren't even my students. Sometimes I would see a little head poke through my door and I would look and I didn't recognize the students and they would just point to my period pantry or period closet and get what they needed and move on. And I even had some of my male students come in sometimes and say, miss, my sister just got her period. And I know that you have this. Um, and so it just started a conversation. Um, and when I was at one of the Democrats uh, for greater Tucson happy hours, uh, gosh, probably a year and a half ago, I I mentioned this just in passing and uh, Christina Early and the folks at DGT said, well, what would you think if we started collecting, asking our members if they wanted to donate period products? And I was just so very grateful um, because it does get expensive, you know, month after month to buy, buy those products for um, not just my classroom, but also the locker room and my other colleagues, um, are buying them for their classrooms. And we no longer are able to get the free samples from, from the manufacturers. They just don't do that anymore. So 
this little tiny idea has now, um, I mean, I've gotten so many donations and we have shared them with other teachers in the school who also want a period closet. Um, we've shared them with our special education classes um, because they also need that for their students. Um, so uh, Christina Early and Kim and Susie came to me and said, well, can we do more? Can we talk about this more? How do we get uh, the community involved. So we had a meeting and we decided that our mission really is to just educate everyone that this is an issue. This is something that is lacking. Um, it's lacking in schools, but it's also just lacking in, in families. Families are hard, having a hard time uh, providing these for their themselves and their kids. And so we just want to keep engaging the public and help help more period closets come about and uh, help them be stopped. So I'm gonna share my screen. Oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that it worked. It's been a little while since I was teaching yoga on Zoom, so I was a little rusty, but whew. Okay, so this, I'm not gonna read you the slides, but the first slide just shows about who is struggling to afford feminine hygiene products. These are products that are, are expensive. Um, and you can see that, you know, 23% of, of people in this survey, and this is the US, uh, struggle to afford their period products, but up to 62% of the people in this survey rarely or never find free period products in public restrooms. And that's the case in our in our public schools. The restrooms do not have those, um, you know, little dispensers that I remember seeing when I was growing up. They just don't have them. Um, and so, and then in the middle, this is a this is a dangerous statistic that forty percent of people have worn period products for longer than recommended, and and that is that's a health concern. Um, okay, it's not. There we go. Um, in Arizona, their last budget uh, in April, we there were there was two million dollars that was appropriated to the Department of Education for period products to be in middle and high schools. However, there was I don't know there were issues with the budget. And there was never, we call it a burb, which is the policy associated with the money. And I was asked, asked to submit that. And then the budget was closed and voted on before that was actually done. So I have staff checking on where is that $2 million? Um, can it still be distributed to schools? Um, but frankly, I don't think it has been. And this is a problem because as you know, we have a huge budget deficit this year. So this type of money for these programs, I am thinking will be something that is taken away. Uh, let's see, okay. So in Arizona, one in five women, and that's between 12 and 44, live under the federal poverty line. One in 14s have missed class because they did not have the period products that they needed to be able to go to school and not have an accident. That breaks my heart, and it also makes me really angry. This is not something, this is not a luxury product. This is not something that, you know, you could do without. This is essential for anyone who has a period. Um, and then there are some more just facts. Um, people are tr struggling right now to keep up with their bills and expenses. There's not very much extra money. And, you know, it's that these types of things that are so expensive that people are struggling to, to buy. Um, there are 392,000 girls between 18 and 11, 11 and 18. And um, we talked about this one in four have missed school. That's a, that is a ridiculous reason to miss school. 
Um, so this just outlines some of the reasons why, uh, you know, this is upsetting. So they can't afford period products or people, you know, I mean, not everyone has a regular period. That's just the, that's life. And then, um, some places like New York city, uh, have had laws that require, um, that period products be free for students. And I, I support that. Um, so we want to reduce period poverty, um, foster kids, you know, they, maybe they can't talk to their foster parents. I mean, it, it can be a delicate subject and it can come with some, uh, some information that's not terribly correct for some parents. Some I have heard my students say, um, well, you know, my mom doesn't want me to use tampons. Um, and they really want to because they want to join the swim team or they're on cheer. Um, so there's, there's just a lot of shame and a lot of, um, it makes it detrimental. Um, so we know that they have to spend more time out of class if they actually have to go to a nurse's office, you know, that is at Tucson high, that is across the whole school from my classroom, I would have to write a pass for them in the middle of teaching. I would have to write a pass. They would have to put their shoes back on, walk across campus, wait at the nurse's office, get the product they need, then go to the bathroom and then come back to my classroom. If the period products are readily available in the restroom or in some teacher's classes in their same building, it makes it much quicker. Um, and like this says, you know, toilet paper is provided for free. Paper towels sometimes are provided for free. So this should be that as well. Um, okay, stop share. Oh my goodness now. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I almost, I was panicking. Um, <laughs> so um, this, is, this is just something that shouldn't be an issue and it should not be a barrier for students to be in school because of their period. Um, I talk to all of my classes about this. Um, all genders are in my classes. And I really think it's important that we educate not only our female students, but you know our male students about that this is a normal part of life and not something to be ashamed of. Um, it also goes beyond our, our female students, um, you know, our transgender students are dealing with this as well because, um, you know, our transgender boys uh, menstruate. And so, um, you know, can you imagine um, presenting as, you know, a boy, all your friends, you have a, a, a male name and you, um, you know, you live your life as a male, but you are menstruating and then you have to, you know, out yourself to get a period product. It, it just, it's, it's not necessary. Okay. So, um, I don't know if Kim or, or Christina are on the call, but if they are, I'm happy to, uh, allow them to, uh, to chime in because I'm sure I'm missing some things and they have, they've helped me create the slides and, and I couldn't have done this without them. But basically we're reaching out to schools to see who might be, who might be teachers that are, would volunteer to have a little period closet in their classroom. And then we've also reached out to um, Dr. Ravi on this TUSD school board to just let him know that this is something that um, we should be getting money for and uh, that, you know, TUSD and all of the districts should start forming a plan on how they'll use that money to get these period products to the kids that need them. Um, let's see, I'm seeing some chats. So I think I'll, oh, yay, Christina. <laughs> Please, um, what, what can you add? Because I'm sure I missed something. No, no, you are spot on. Hi, everybody. Um, Nancy, thank you so much for doing this. Um, this was near and dear also to my late husband's. Um, in, in his memory, I really um, want to go forward with this. And basically, 
everything you said is is um, is spot on. What we're hoping to do, um, and and Nancy made it very clear that we need to do this without asking for any kind of funding. So, uh, so um, Susie, Kim, and I, uh, and Kim's on the call too. I saw her, so I'm sure she'll she'll want to uh, add, but. What I'm understanding is that we we want to um, to just ask the school district, and we're starting with TUSD to provide that closet, that drawer, that box, whatever it may be that uh, we can get the the uh, products to. And then we're gonna then once that's established, then we're gonna reach out to the to the uh, parents and to the public to help provide this. So we're not asking for the state for money. We're not asking for um, the school for money. We're just asking, we're just asking for a place that we can put this throughout TS TUSD. And then of course we would then go on to the other school districts in the um in the area. So so Kim, I see you're you're there. You want to um to chime in here? Make sure I'm spot on. Yes, definitely. Um, now, someone said to the chat about the diaper bank. We do know that the diaper bank is doing a program and we want to partner with other organizations because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. And also, uh, we're hoping that at some point people will get the word out. They'll start sharing with each other. and We will be inundated, we hope, with donations of product to make it so much easier for us to distribute them to people in need. Yes, absolutely. Um, I let's see. Um, someone else asked about the two million dollars that it's it's went to the. I don't even know if that actually got to the Department of Education, and so we are. Um, I'm I'm asking staff to track that down. Thank because you. It's it's getting late in the year anyway. And then someone else said, "Is it better to give money or products? Products um, right now because." I def. I mean, I'm going to ask you for money for my campaign, but I'm not going to ask you for money for this and hold on to it. But that's to be continued, I think. And when we find, um, you know, other other people who would be willing to have these products in their classrooms, um, so, and how much more we can get get it out there. So, um, okay. So Larry just said, move on to legislative update. So I want to, but I want to thank Christina and Kim and, um, and DGT because I have, my students have benefited. I have benefited from your hard work and from all of the donations. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So, um, switching gears to, to legislative update, um, Chris and Priya are sorry that they're not here but they're texting me updates right now. So I'm going to read it. Um, Senator Sunderation Priya said that uh, they haven't seen too many bills in the Senate side yet. Um, and many are reruns from last time. But, but the big topic is continuing these government agencies. Um, so a lot of the Republicans, instead of giving agencies an eight or 10 year continuance after they've gone through the process, the sunset process and being audited, like in years past, they get 10 years to, to keep going. But now, the uh, especially the Freedom Caucus wants them to have two years to continue. And the Republicans, many of them are saying they only get a four-year continuance. And that is, it just gives a lot more work to the government agency. And it's just a waste of time and money. Um, I was subbing in the government committee last week and we were listening to um, the report from the Arizona Department of Administration. And they they do so much in the whole state and they were supposed to get a 10 year continuance. Uh, it went down to four. I did a substitute motion to get it up to eight, which got knocked down and they got a four year continuation. And this is just an example of the Republicans trying to disrupt government. There was there's no reason to to do that to these agencies. Um, and then Chris today said that and and so Representative Mathis 
And uh, Senator Sunderation said, today in water, the governor announced that they're starting a process to determine if Gila Bend should be an AMA. And um, there is a there is a press release out there that both Representative Mathis and, and Senator Sunderation um, approve of that and really want it to move forward. And I know that behind the scenes, they are both a ranking member on the Senate and, and um, House side, and they have been uh, really working behind the scenes to make this happen. So I will tell you um, what else has been happening. I'm going to, I'm going to say something that I was proud to get to do. It was one of my best days uh, on the floor so far. Last week, um, I had a proclamation proclamation read that honored the victims and survivors of our January 8th shooting. It was read on the House floor. And um, I had uh, Nancy Bowman and um, Patricia Mace join me on the floor. And I got to introduce them both and um, say a few words. And uh, I'm going to link that up to my um, website. And uh, so you can all see it, but it was really moving. And I was very, very proud that I was allowed to do that. Um, it was a bit of a, I had to work hard for the Republicans to let me say things like mass shooting and gun violence. They didn't want to say that. And they didn't want to let me say that in the proclamation, um, but I convinced them that that's indeed what it was. So in the end, that's what we said. Um, so as my as my being minority whip, I am working to just, you know, get our bills heard and make sure my caucus has all of the information. Uh, I have a, a license bill, um, a license plate bill that will put an ovarian cancer license plate um, as one of the options that you can get. Uh, and that's going to be in uh, the transfer trans transportation and infrastructure um, committee tomorrow. So that's my first bill that I've had actually heard and I'm very excited. I'm working on another two bills to get them on a committee that protects kids whose parents have like vlogs and are on the internet and the kids don't have a choice whether they participate or not. But some sometimes these go viral and the parents make millions of dollars. So this would ask that the parents put into trust 30% of their proceeds that they get for the kids when they turn 18. And then the other one would actually allow children when they turn 18 to say that they don't want their videos and their pictures on the internet through their parents' um, vlogs and blogs. So um, I'm working hard at that. Other states are doing that legislation. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking at the chat. Oh, Thank you, Margaret Lacey is saying we could collect period products at PCDP. Oh, that would be amazing. Um, that would be so wonderful. Um, gun safety bills are huge. And um, I also dropped a bill that would ban, it would take away the state preemption on counties creating their own gun legislation. And it was Supervisor Rex Scott that brought me that bill. Um, and so I'm working with Pima County. We're going to do a press conference soon to talk about that. That won't be um, that won't be talked about on committee, but it's an important first step um, because the pre people that we elect in our cities and our in our counties, they should be the ones that are making the laws that govern us. Um, I went very, very quickly, and I know there's more, but I'm happy to take take questions and it's very hard. I've been staring at myself talking this whole time. So that's, I've had enough of myself. Um, if you do have a question, please put it in the chat and Monica went up, will find that for you and ask it of Nancy. Um, we also are asking people. Um, so Chris and Priya and I are slating Um to run for re-election and we are asking that everybody please, please go online. I'm gonna find the link for you. Please go online and sign our equal petitions and you could sign um, Supervisor Scott and um, uh, our, our 
recorder and our Pima County attorney and everybody wonderful who's running in Pima County um, because we need your help. It's it's it, and I'd like to thank um, Lori Cinnamon for helping us gather those petitions. Um, it's just a lot of work. Um, we don't have an email or website yet for the period product program, but we're open to help on that. Um, and then let's see, check with the bank diaper bank. Uh, yeah, we don't need to. Oh, thank you, Larry, for putting that in the in the chat. We don't need to reinvent the wheel, but the thing is, we do, I also don't want my students to have to go to the diaper bank to get what they need at their house. Um, because that in itself takes away that ease of it. They need it where they need it. And um, when they get it from a classroom, I, I, you know, sometimes kids will say, well, can I take two? And I just tell them, take whatever you need. This, this is for you. So, um, so thank you for your help with that. And thank you for your help with reelection. Um, I've said this before, but it is an honor of a lifetime to serve you all in this community. Um, please reach out to me anytime. Um, I, I welcome your calls and your emails and your texts because I'm here to serve you and I'm here to bring your voice up to the state legislature. And this year I'm on education and I'm on appropriation. So I will be working with the governor's team to pass a budget that helps write our, our, our deficit problem and um, helps stop some of these uh, exorbitant expenses. Well, Nancy, thank you very much for that presentation. It's a very practical, very useful, and we're so delighted here in LD18 to have you as one of our state representatives. And thank you again for that presentation. Thank you. And with that, I want to say thank you very much. We look forward to your donations, and we look forward to your participation. We'll see you out on the campaign trail.